Hello and welcome to the Arcad Saga. My name is Ilkion Biersma, also known as uh, EJ. So yeah, finally we do, are going to do an update on my PH project that I uh, have going on and it will be going on for at least uh, a year, I think. But um, yeah, already I have a few changes. But before I'm going to into it, and I think they are very interesting, if you ask me, uh, just a, a little uh, a recap on what we are actually doing if you missed uh, the first video. Uh, I, will, uh, I will link it in the end of this video so you can check it out. But basically um, I have a semi hydroponic setup going on, I'm not flushing and thereby I found out that uh, within uh, five to seven months on most orchids, the pH of the reservoir is dropping. So it's not rising anymore because of the inorganic media, but it's dropping for some reason. I'm not completely sure which reason, but um, a few months back, just before I started this project, I did get a comment from uh, Tom Furby that uh, he also uh, does grow in the uh, same setup. So that was the first and uh, I never heard uh, of anybody growing exactly the same way as I do as well uh, as he did, so that was kind of funny. But uh, he did get a, a very, um, very great tip from uh, Roy Takanara. Probably you know that name. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, that's a very, very, very good grower, of course. So uh, those tips uh, we need to take seriously, I think. <laughs> um, but anyhow, Tom was kind enough to share that tip with me. And it's basically uh, to keep a nice P8 in the reservoir. So my solution to that was, and you probably see me using this on occasion on my, uh, in my videos, is this a calcium magnesium powder that is very beneficial for your orchid. First of all, because it's uh, calcium magnesium and it also does raise the pH. So what I did was I give my orchids a scoop um, of this stuff every three months and that worked for me. It worked uh, wonderfully well, but that meant that every three months I needed to go to my whole collection and I have 400 plus orchids um, growing in a semi hydroponic setup. So that was quite a job to give them all that calcium. So, and that's how this project uh, started because I wanted to test this out because I had a feeling that this might work. And I'm talking about the Archifit. That is the one that I did get as a suggestion from, uh, from Tom. And uh, so I started using it. And right from the get-go, I was like, well, if this not really does work, so if, if it doesn't stabilize the pH, it might be beneficial anyways, because it does contain vitamins. It does contain vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B6, and B12. And I always had in the back of my mind that maybe, probably, I should give my orchids vitamins as well. So I did not much, but I did see it on, on some YouTube channels with uh, growers that give their orchids uh, vitamins. And I had this feeling, and that's how I grow my orchids. If I something feels right or interesting, I dive into it. And um, in most cases, I start using it. I didn't use, didn't start use uh, vitamins yet because maybe you recognize this, but sometimes we just want to put in too much into our orchids to let them too grow, to let them too flourish, and we end up just mixing up the wrong thing. So I thought, well, I. I have quite a schedule going on already. Also a video that will, uh, I will link in on the end of this video about my fertilizers and additives. But so I, I thought, yeah, maybe I need to slow down now. And, and that's basically, I started forgetting about it, but it was somewhere in the back of my mind. So that was the first thing I saw when I bought the, uh, the Archi Fit. And I thought, well, that is definitely going to be beneficial or at least interesting to follow and to see if something will happen. So that's the first thing. The second thing uh, is that I started measuring some plants in that video just to see what uh, the pH was and what, what was going to happen. I am not going to bother, uh, bother you uh, with this too much. I know not a lot of people are really interested in it, but it's very, very beneficial to get a certain idea if products do work or not. So that's why I do these little tests. Well, 
first of all, all the plants that I did uh, use for the test had a, had a nice pH, so that wasn't really a problem. But there's a reason why this family opsis is in frame as well. Maybe you recognize it because of the spikes. This is the one that uh, bloomed uh, earlier this year with 18 spikes on it. 18 spikes uh, on one fell blooming at the same time. Also a video that I will link, but it was it's beautiful. So yeah, that's maybe uh, be for some interest as well to see. But uh, yeah, I do uh, also uh, randomly check my archives. I just pick one out uh, of a shelf or from the wall in this case and uh, just see how the pH is, uh, it's on which level we, uh, we have it currently. So I did that with this fell. Uh, luckily I did, because this one, and it's about two months ago I think, it had a pH reading of 4.8. So that's way, way too low. And uh, well, I'm going to give you a close up now from the roots, because that is a telltale sign. You probably see some blacking, uh, black dutch on the roots there and that is a first telltale sign for me uh, from experience that something is wrong and probably in my case the ph because of the system that i have my orchids in so i checked it and yes it was way too low so even though i use this uh, fertilizer i also did put in this uh, calcium um, magnesium mixture again to be sure that the pH would have a nice level again. And I thought, I don't know which orchid that I have that also has a low pH. So, I, because then I had to check all my orchids. That is not what I wanted to do. So, I give them all a scoop again of this calcium magnesium. First of all, maybe I didn't use this product long enough to get it completely stabilized for all my orchids. That is a pretty uh, pretty big option here, a pretty uh, big reason why not all uh, reservoirs are at a nice pH yet. Anyhow, I also must admit that I really enjoy working and using this product. So I thought, well, if the Archifit does work, Basically, that means that I don't have to use this product anymore because I mainly did use it for the pH. And I, and I just, just don't want to do it because I, I think when I started using this, I also saw some very good uh, results from my orchids. So that is why this changed. And that is why I'm not going too deep into the pHs anymore. Currently, I will come back to it later in this video. I will do some stuff, some testing, but that's for, for later on. So I thought, well, okay, I uh, didn't use it probably as long enough. I, I want to continue using this because of the vitamins and I want to continue using this because it's calcium, magnesium, and it's very, very beneficial for your orchids. So I thought, well, coming year, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use calcium magnesium, a scoop for every pot, every reservoir, uh, just before uh, the growing season starts. So somewhere spring. It might be halfway spring or later spring. It depends on the weather, of course. Even though I know my orchids keep on growing in the winter because I have the extra lights and the heating on, but there's nothing like a real daylight. I can always see the difference. So that's why I still have a, a growing season. And I thought, well, I'm going to use it because it's just so beneficial for my plants. So that's the first thing. And then I also use this every time I fertilize my orchids. I'm still going to use it because uh, I th think I see some pretty good results. And I will grab the camera in a minute and we will have a look around and I will point things out. But um, I think that at least in summer, next coming summer, I will do an update again on this project because then I'm, I will be using this product for almost a year, maybe a year, depending on when I make that video. So we might have a better uh, idea of it's working. On the other hand, I know I also you know, still will be using the calcium magnesium powder. So 100% sure I will not be anymore if this project will completely stabilize the reservoir. 
And yeah, that's, that's, that's a big change because that was the first reason why I started this project. But I see different, uh, different reactions and I, and I love both projects. So I changed this project and that's basically why I do projects. Just we have a baseline, we have a start and during uh, the, the, the upcoming weeks, months, when you use a product, you might see different things and you might change your mind because uh, because of good things in this case. It could be all bad things. That's always uh, when you start a project, you never know. But in this case, it's very good. So that's why I'm going to change it. And let me know if you are agreeing with this change or maybe I missed something. Maybe you're like, well, you didn't think of that. Please leave it in the comment section below. I'm really interested in to hear uh, those things. But I think we might be on a very, very uh, nice track on growing my orchids. And I will show you now why. So let's, uh, let's have a look around. So yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look around and go for some signs. And before I do that, I just wanted to point out, I'm obviously not completely sure if the orchid fit is the reason why these orchids do so much better, but it is something that did change uh, uh, last uh, growing season and the only thing that it did change on the fertilizer and the additives is the orchid fit so I think definitely especially the vitamins uh, gave just a little bit of extra to my orchids uh, but that's you never know for sure that's just one uh, basically what I'm trying to say well this is the first one maybe you remember it but last time it was in bloom and it has now currently as you can see a fairly big spike it only had a teeny tiny spike with one bloom and the previous one before that was I think four or five blooms but it now has two four six seven eight and like we just saw a very long spike a nice thick spike so that's a beautiful sign but also this bulb over here is carrying the spike it's bigger than this one and the previous one and this one as had was quite a size already but it didn't have nearly as long spike as it doesn't have now so that's for me a, a big change as well at least on this one then over here this is my peggy root carpenter has a way longer spike than it ever had before even though we did change the light levels but it is that is something i always say in my uh, videos as well is that those two the lights and the fertilizer almost well not yeah for me goes hand in hand not almost go hand in hand if you don't have the light you don't have the fertilizer because the orchid will not grow well so anyhow so that is what we changed but the fertilizer is only the orchid fit and that's a beautiful uh, fairly large spike then um, here we have a beautiful structure i do remember that this one had quite a spike before but I'm not sure if it had a secondary, but anyhow, this one is doing uh, do very well as well. But what I do know that this one did get more light and is a first time bloomer. It did skip blooming last year, even though it has quite a size to it, but it did skip it. So the lights did improve plus I think the fertilizer. And now we have three beautiful spikes. This is uh, coming from another one. So these are the three spikes. <laughs> And then over here, this is very, very obvious. It's this red one. I had this for several years in my collection. I never ever had so many blooms on it. Let me, uh, and this was always on this shelf, so it didn't change the light levels. Beautiful. But these are two spikes. I hope you can see. They are a little bit almost tangled together. But here you can see this one and this one. But yeah, a heck of a lot of blooms. And behind there are my Nelly Eilers. Those did better last year because I did put them in the light. But look, for example, that spike there that is in the window sail hanging there. Look at the amount of blooms. Never had so many blooms on a Nelly Eiler, for sure. So that is pretty good stuff. So yeah, again, I'm not completely sure if the fertilizer was uh, working, but I think it, it does. This is also such a uh, beautiful example. I think this is the newest um, spike there. And 
over there, another one, just opened up. And yes, I'm pointing these out because I never ever had for such a long time a Miltoniopsis in bloom. So we have now, I have several of them, I know, but there was just a period per year that they did bloom. In, in spring, most of them did, did bloom and sometimes a few in fall. But I think it was from February or March, the first one started to bloom and we are now uh, very close to November when I'm filming this. And look at this, I still have a few in bloom. And this one just opened up. I think it's the biggest spike ever. It has, has seven blooms on it and they are gorgeous. But beautiful, very nice, strong structure. And this one has two beautiful spikes on two different different bulbs. So one spike per bulb. Not that many flowers on this one, but look at the colors. Very bright, strong colors. And again, still in bloom, some Miltonia. So yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> maybe we will have some more spikes and we will have a, a year round of uh, Miltoniopsis blooms. That would be uh, pretty awesome, of course. Who knows, who knows. Anyhow, let's go uh, have a look in, inside of the greenhouse for some updates here, because here are a few as well, for sure. Well, first of all, I didn't do much, uh, I didn't give this much good care in the beginning. I did discuss it in one of my videos, my La Caste, because I did start to water it too early. So that's a problem, of course. But first time this one uh, will uh, rebloom for me. So that's beautiful. Two spikes, very strong spikes on this one. It did bloom before, but I have a feeling that these spikes are bigger and stronger. Plant is getting bigger as well, but still it's positive change. Very positive. And let's have a look at the Wilbur Chang is starting to bloom, but it has currently still five, yeah, five spikes on it. Big, huge chains. I couldn't get it to bloom. I did change the location, so obviously that did help. But when I started uh, with the orchid fertilizer, it, it, it had a first spike and then it suddenly it started making more. Who knows? Who knows? So let's... Uh, head over here where I have another big change for sure. Well, first of all, this one, actually I have two big changes. This is huge. I know it never ever had such big, long spikes. And yes, currently it's raining. So that's why my floor is a little bit wet. Anyhow, doesn't matter. And the blooms are bigger than ever before, for sure. So you might think, yeah, it's now a specimen size plant. Well, yeah, if you look at it on the ends of the growing um, section, growing parts of this plant, we have a new bulb. The bulbs before, if you can imagine, it was still already a big plant, but it, they didn't produce spikes like this. Nothing, not, not even close, maybe half of the spike, something like that. We have one hanging over there. Can you see that? stop heavy because of the blooms but it's it doesn't snap it doesn't break luckily it's a little bit inconvenient because it's so big but uh we managed but yeah beautiful beautiful so that's an update and i think one of the biggest and one of the most important for me is this one this cane is just about finishing now and we have two more there. Maybe you recognize it already, but this is my Dendrobium Javionum. Here's the name tag. And I struggled with this once for quite some time. I did have it in bloom, yes, but I couldn't get it to grow these big canes. I tried it in several places, in my greenhouse, in the orchid room. I couldn't find the right spot. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to put you back where we started this. And it's uh, over this, uh, this area where it's uh, currently uh, sitting or standing. And lo and behold, it started to grow and you can see it. Beautiful, shiny leaves. I didn't clean it at all, but this is how it should look. We even have a beautiful cakey here that is, has a beautiful shine on the leaves as well. But this cane, you guys, never ever ha I had it so big. So yeah, that's a big plus. And once again, if you have changes, no matter 
what in in I mean by no matter if it's a good change or a bad change, you try to find out what did change. Did you change something to your fertilizer routine? Did you start watering more or less, or uh, did you move the plants, etc.? And that is a sort of telltale if something uh, uh, was off or something is obviously working very well. <laughs> So for me, yeah, the only thing that I did change is uh, the Archivit. It is, with the vitamins. And then we have these guys with the beautiful long canes. Yes, I always had them in bloom, but I never had such long canes, such long flower spikes on them. I didn't. I never did. Only one was, except maybe here, this one had once a very, very long spike. That was it. It currently has two, but it had two more that I unfortunately did break off. About the same length, I think, something like this. But anyhow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that is something that I saw changing, and I thought, yeah, I need to mention that. Also, my, uh, I'm sorry, don't try to make you dizzy, yellow birds here but look th at those two that spike and that spike these are previous spikes these are still green i didn't cut off anything if you look at these and then compare it to this one for example there's a change isn't there absolutely quite some looms on there and this was already a very nice big size plant as well So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, that little tour. Um, one more time, I'm I'm not completely 100% sure that the vitamins of this product did work, but these changes uh, I never saw such major changes before. So it probably is a combination of different factors. Well, I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, it is, and uh, yeah, the vitamins. The vitamins, they help, at least on these orchids. Uh, maybe for some orchids it, it didn't make a difference at all, but these uh, we just saw definitely improved. And uh, yeah, I thought, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to sh share that, of course. And that is the beauty of projects. Uh, I think when you start um, trying to introduce something new and have a look, the only thing is I did introduce it to my whole collection. I wouldn't suggest uh, doing that if you try something new, try it on a few plants and just see how they do. But um, yeah, I go with my guts in, in most cases. I, uh, and I did with this one, I was, I, this should work, at least it should help. And the uh, start, like I said in the intro, it was because of the uh, urea nitrogen. The urea, urea nitrogen, <laughs> there we go. Uh, does make uh, the pH rise again and the nitrogen, uh, nitrogen does lower it and that's why somewhere you should get a balance because my other fertilizers do not have this uh, urea uh, nitrogen and this one does so that's uh, that's how we started this project and then I saw the benefits of the vitamins as well so what I'm basically telling you is uh, also is that you do not necessarily uh, probably need to use this brand of orchid fertilizer if you want to have uh, if you want to see if your orchids like the vitamins if you with, uh, will get uh, benefits out of them you just have to add uh, the vitamins so probably there's a different brand more easier to get or something you already have uh, sitting in your home not using a uh, liquid or something with the vitamins you probably can use it obviously it needs to be uh, uh, uptakeable for the plant so that's your research uh, to do just want to point it out that I like this brand because I have the good results and I really do like the story behind it I mean that's the the beauty of having an orchid channel and people willing to help you of course because Tom uh, did uh, take the time to explain what he did and to explain uh, the information he got from Roy Takanano so I always will be thankful for that and uh, that's the beauty and that's why I try to encourage people always to leave comments and uh, just so we can learn, not only me, but all 
who join this channel and who are, who, who are watching this video and have a look at the comments. You never know, you never know, there might be uh, some beautiful information there. Anyhow you guys, a very special video, I really enjoy it. Uh, um, because uh, it's beautiful, it's something, uh, something uh, is on a change. And like I said in the intro, I will definitely do a, uh, another sort of update, uh, at least in summer, next summer. So we had a whole year around. I had then uh, put in another scoop of this uh, calcium magnesium powder stuff. Plus I still will be using the Archifit. So we shall see and hopefully uh, uh, this is a start of a beautiful new journey for my orchids. It's, uh, it's, it looks very promising, let's put it like that. Anyhow, if you didn't already have, you may want to have subscribed to my channel, give this a thumbs up, maybe you want to share this video. I hope that we can, uh, like I said, can share not only in the comments, but who knows. And of, of course, if you have something to share, put it in there or questions, I uh, would love to hear and read them. So thank you in advance for that. And for now, I just really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.